There's only two words in the entire English language that can simultaneously bring apart both a fan deafening round of applause and spark immense discussion on the genius of this single individual who was single handedly brought forth some of the greatest imaginative and game changing writing that has ever been known. On the other hand, also, these same two words can bring about a mass hysteria of hatred and disgust and dislike and fan discussion regarding what on earth was this individual possibly thinking. So ladies and gentlemen, as I welcome you back for another intergalactic out of this world, oh yes indeed, the man, the myth, the legend, Matt Ward. With that being said, for today's episode, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to be looking at the legendary Codex author himself to take a look back and put a kind of a D99 Studio spin. And with all that being said, I still can't figure out exactly why and what everybody has a beef about. I mean, yes, I myself, with no disrespect to, to this incredible individual, he's very talented, he's very imaginative, and he's a sensational author, but there was a point in time when I, too, jumped on the bandwagon and was like, what is this? I don't even. And that, of course, was the release of the Grey Knights Codex and how impossible it was to play against this army. It seemed like there were no flaws. It was it was perfect. And at the time, that's not what 40k needed. 40k, up until that point in my gaming experience, had a sort of a balance to it, employing both strategy, skill, and just sheer dumb luck dice uh, dice rolls. But then here come the Grey Knights, and it's like. Yeah, you could roll straight sixes on 36 dice. You're not going to be doing anything. But with that being said, let's take a look back and let's see how Matt Ward rose to, rose to prominence and also rose to infamy. He begins his career in Games Workshop all the way back in 2005 as a frequent contributor and article author for what used to be a monthly published, or was monthly published, and now back to being monthly published, magazine Games Workshop's very own White White Dwarf, to which his articles, his painting tutorials, and just updates on what he was doing in his personal career were some of the best reading you could find in this monthly publication. Fast forward to 2008, he's given the golden pen and a chance to pen a codex of his very own, the da Daemon's Achaia, which and for his first codex was some of the best writing that Games Workshop had ever seen. So seeing the potential of this amazing budding star at Games Workshop, it was vastly approaching Games Workshop's 10th anniversary. And what better way to celebrate 10 years of incredible gaming history than have a, a newest edition of the rulebook. So, with pen in hand and the blessing of the God Emperor himself, Matt Ward personally penned and released one of the greatest rulebooks ever to be published. Ladies and gentlemen, our very own Matt Ward wrote 5th edition. Now for those of you that had the opportunity to play in 5th edition or have been able to speak to seasoned gamers like myself who played in 5th edition, it was one of the best editions to be a 40k player in. I mean, the orcs were orcs, tough green skins, unkillable monstrosities, the Tyranids were still a tyrannical wave of death, the Xeno races, the rich lore and history behind the chaos gods. And finally, delving deeper into the Horus Heresy, bringing that all to life. Not to mention, we're going to tip our hat first of all to Matt Ward because Rhino Rush. For those of you who don't know what Rhino Rush is, I've discussed that in a previous video. I'll give you a quick breakdown. You basically have a Rhino. It's a Space Marine transport vehicle. Your Space Marines get in the Rhino. They travel. It's got an assault ramp. Your Space Marines get out of the Rhino. They say, forget about your couch. They get back at the Rhino and they drive 10 miles down the road and they do the same thing to the next group. Yes, that was all Matt Ward's doing. And then things would get really, really crazy. Amir, six months after the 5th edition's release, would come the box set, The Battle for McCraig. And what would be in that box set? Matt Ward's absolute dream child, The Ultramarines. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, the Savannah Blue Boys, the ever-popular Smurf-tacular force created by none other than Matt Ward. 
So with all this being said, how could this man possibly a, possibly both grow to one of the, to a paradigm of sheer literacy of mag, such magnitude to believe that guy he doesn't know what he's doing seriously how could it have possibly happened I mean after all five years later came my first Space Marine Force Army of course being the Blood Angels penned of course exclusively by this amazing genius but I mean come on what could have possibly happened in that war history and codex that could possibly have driven fans so bat squeak insane that the mere mention of this man's name is like dropping the worst curse word you could possibly think of to your mother I mean come on what could he possibly have done okay that might take some that might take a little bit of explaining but try to put it in perspective Necrons teaming up with blood angels yes never in a in a gosh itty darn lifetime would that actually make sense except anything like you know but it's a trope it's very classic heroes facing villains then there's an even greater enemy so the heroes and the villains have to team up this has been done throughout the history of literature. It's been done in Marvel. It's been done in DC. So please, all the fanboys and fangirls out there, get over it. Because while this great battle was going on, you had a prominent bloody angel commander facing one of the most stalwart, still perfectly electronically minded, intact Necron leaders staring down a splinter of a Tyranid high fleet. In layman's terms, according to measurement, you are talking about enough Tyranids coming at both respective armies who have been fighting for a month straight, enough physical presence to cover the current United States of America. Blanket it. Not a single piece of Earth visible through this tidal wave. So seriously, with that imagination behind it, can you possibly not look past, okay, a Xeno race and one of the most stalwart at the time, severely loyal, even with their genetic defect that all Blood Angels must one day confront and face, unless you get accepted into the Death Company because apparently that means you don't become a crazy bloodthirsty vampire and then shoot yourself in the head. But really, that's what set everybody off because I did my research before doing this video. That's apparently what ticked everybody off. Was that? I mean, seriously, it's like, you know, reading a, a novel and not agreeing where the characters go or watching a movie adaptation of, of one of your favorite books. Actually, that's not a fair judgment to make. Scratch that because I have absolutely rage quit, you know, watching movies halfway through because I'm like, oh cool, this is based on a book that I like, and then I go see it and I'm like, nope. But that war didn't stop there. Shortly only one, I'm sorry, five uh, years later, Games Workshop would once again go, you know what, we're about to have a big celebration, it's time for a change. Matt, here's your golden pen. Go get him, son. And we had the most amazing fantasy rewrite, again, rich amazing lore that of course being his personal penmanship of the Warhammer Fantasy 8th edition rulebook unreal you guys and then two more armies after that the dark the dark elves and the night elves holy smokes and then one more time three short years later lending his pen to repen his first codex the demons of chaos which was an incredibly great book. Led to the releases of new models. I mean, come on. The Hellkite, great model. Very, very, very beneficial. Very dangerous for us on the Imperial side. But then again, thinking back, everybody's like, well, this guy doesn't know how to write. These models don't make sense and whatnot. The man wrote a demon mechanical dragon into the story. It not only had the ability of flight, it not only the, you know, uh, had the ability of a directional flamethrower that scattered, which that's something fierce. So let me tell you, facing down this thing, that flamethrower, your invol saves, you better roll them invol saves. So I don't understand why everybody still to this day has 
such a hatred because yes, the man made mistakes, who doesn't make mistakes? We are all human. However, when you look back, doesn't the amount of awesome outweigh the amount of, what did you do? Like, it's not even on the radar, all the good that came out of it. In fact, the man's so maligned in fan circles that when he announced at the end of 2013, when he was going to be going off doing personal literature and penning for the Black Library, there were, you know, county, prefecture, city, statewide parties where people were like, yay! And then somebody made the joke at the end of 2016 when he was like, you know, I think it's time I go back to Games Workshop, get back to my roots. Everybody was like, oh, it's the end times. Except when it was rumored that he was going to be writing the new 40K rulebook. The hypocrite! I'm, I'm sorry, I had to clear my throat there before I was about to say that. I think some fans out there might have been just a little bit hypocritical. I'll throw my hat in that that circle because yes you could probably say the same thing about me to be completely honest on the one hand i absolutely could not stand the gray knights codex for what it did for gaming at large but there were other reasons in that that do not need to be discussed on this show because well it's a family show other than that yes the writing didn't make any sense because i examined the fluff and the gray knights really took the fluff and went nope here's our fluff and that's not cool but we all got over it. Life went on. Michelle Jonovich came in. She helped author the second Grand High Codex. Things got a little more balanced. Everything is okay. So if indeed Matt Ward touched upon or even wrote, because I still cannot find an author listed in that blasted book. So somebody in the comments, email, Facebook, telephone call, smoke signal, carrier pigeon, Please tell me who wrote that amazing book. I want to know. I want to do a video. I want to praise he or she. Or if it was done by a sentient computer. It. I don't care. I just want to know. Because it's amazing. So, there you have it. As promised, what everybody voted for. If you haven't probably known by now, this was the special video I was planning. I wanted to make absolutely sure that before I did this video, that Matt Ward wasn't actually going to be the named author of the book because I didn't want to do this special video on him without being able to give full credit, you know, to him for all the amazing that the new rulebook is. But at the same time, I also did not want to finally not do this video because I don't mind telling you all out there in YouTube land, I have gotten emails and emails and emails asking me to throw my hat in the ring and put two cents on the table and talk about Matt Ward from my perspective. Do I think the man is everything that everybody says he is? No. Do I agree with some of the opinions? Yes. Regarding the nature of the Grey Knights Codex and what it did for the game, yeah, there's quite a bit of dislike there. But, like I said, it's a game. Life went on. I'm still here doing this amazing show. You're out there hopefully still playing this amazing game, or if you're a fan of my show and this is your first episode, I really encourage everybody out there, regardless of who the author is, what the army is, give 40K a try. Every, I know everywhere in the continental US, this game is played. Everywhere. There isn't probably a single state that somewhere in it does not have, or the world for that matter, somewhere on planet Earth, there is a spot where you can ask someone, hey, can I give that a try? And I can promise you this, 99.9% .9 of the time, somebody will pull you up a chair, pour you a cold glass of your favorite soda or a tall ice water, have you sit down, enjoy yourself, and do something that not just Matt Ward brought a whole lot of joy to, but all the authors at Games Workshop, all the designers, all the modelers, all the factory workers, the mold makers, whatever your position is there, even the janitors, making sure that that building, you could probably see yourself, your full-blown, full-color spectrum reflection on every single surface in that building, the cafeteria cranking out the most delicious of English cuisines, whatever. You're all amazing people. So we here at D99 Studios, all of us, like to, again, say thank you guys for all that you do. Matt Ward, Thank you, sir, for everything that you have done for Games Workshop, 
for 40k and what I am hoping you'll do in your return to Games Workshop. And a very special thank you also out there, of course, not forgetting all our beloved fans out there whom without you guys, we would not be able to make this show every single week, would not be able to make this show what it is. And with that being said, as I express another great thank you to our fans, I express my personal hope for you all not to forget our spiel. You're going to have that subscribe button right up there at the top. Ladies and gentlemen, please keep shooting me, my lovely wife, poised behind the camera, and our new Tourist Team members, Fred and Rachel. Those incredible questions and comments they are going to love to see, Irene and I love to see, in the section right below this video. And right there, to get in touch with two of our newest team members, Irene and I personally. There, there it is, guys and gals, right there. Our email address, d99studios at gmail.com. That's d99studios at gmail.com. And don't forget, you guys, where does Fred, Rachel, Irene, myself, the world, want to see all the amazing that you do out there? And again, not just 40K, War Machine Hordes, Toy Tuesday, our up-and-coming con appearances and our great cosplay photography and all the amazing stuff that Rachel and Fred are going to be bringing to the channel, but all that and so much more. Where? Right here, our company Facebook page, facebook.com backslash d99studios. Indeed. Yes, sir, you there in the back. It is still one capital D, two nines, studios, right after Facebook.com, to in the place which is the number one place and the whole of the old internet to remain in the know of all things D99 Studios. And yes, indeed, Irene's going to jump out from behind the camera, plant it right here in the hot seat, and hopefully soon. I'm going to be able to bring Rachel and Fred here into the hot seat. We'll have a hey, how's it going? Welcome to D99 Studios video so you guys can get yourselves acquainted with our two newest team members. They're sensational. We worked on something special yesterday, the three of us, and I promise you guys when it's up, you are going to love it. I am so happy to have them on board. Irene is thrilled that we are now a whole again as D99 Studios, but we will not forget our original team and all the fantastic work that they did because whether it's new faces or old faces we don't think about replacing people around here we just bring even more people in to the family and with that being said as we bring more in of course Irene's gonna be bringing in over that comfy cushion I'm gonna park it right here once again or perhaps be standing in the hot spot never mind sitting here in the hot seat where once again the day of the week will indeed Boy, you guys are on fire today with all these correctnesses. This is, um, it will be Wednesday. Well, I will again, once more, bring you another intergalactic out of this world. Once again, thank you to Mr. Matt Ward, Warhammer Wednesday.